Hi, I'm Gerbe, and I have a laboratory at the Delft University of Technology. And I really, really like my work. I enjoy living in the lab and with these reactors that are bubbling and the smoking cauldrons. I'm not really at my place here in this spot. But I do want to share with you some of our work regarding waste and resources in a circular economy. And to get a feeling of what I mean by that, is we first have got to look at our current economy, where we take resources, for example oils, out of the ground and produce a plethora of products out of this, under which plastics, which eventually end up at the waste fill. Well, or in the water. And, and we don't want that, because we constantly need more of those products. And that means that we are slowly depleting our one and only resource and also producing a huge amount of waste. We can actually look at our current economy and see that it is depicted by an arrow from here to there. And we preferably want to have a situation um, where this diminishing resources is actually replaced by a different resource that does not deplete. And this big word waste might be the key solution to get there. But as it turns out, it's not that easy. It is not that easy that we don't have technology, we don't have to know how to do this. So, um, if you're stuck with a problem, it's most of the time a good idea to go out and take a walk in nature. And when you are in nature, you will find that there does not exist any waste whatsoever in nature. So how is that possible? Well, in nature, there are millions of different types of organisms. Most of these are bacteria that consume one thing and produce another thing. And the other group consumes this other thing and produces another thing. So there's a cycle. Um, so what did we do? We, as a group Environmental Biotechnology, together with our partner, Pax, went to the largest candy factory in the world, where they produce these things, the candy. But while producing this candy, they also produce a huge amount of wastewater, this stuff. And they produce so much that they can fill this theater up to the second balcony every day. And we need to get rid of this. So how do I do this? We created an environment that allows a very peculiar group of organisms to thrive in there. <laughs> this guy. And this guy lives all around us in the waters, but he's less fluffy, I think a million times smaller. But this guy. And this guy has got a special trick, which he often doesn't show. But if we put the environment in such and such way, this guy thinks it's going to be winter. And when he thinks it's going to be winter, he is going to hoard up. So when we let the wastewater come in, this guy is going to grab everything again and store it away for later. And just like you and I, when we eat a lot and we don't exercise enough, we are going to develop a belly. But this guy is the world champion in developing a belly really fast. In a matter of hours, he will develop a belly that is nine times the size that he was originally. Nine, nine times. So it is pretty interesting. But if you have a big belly and we put you in a centrifuge, you can imagine what happened. You will be flung up against the wall. And at the other end, of the centrifuge, you will find this stuff, cleaned water. These fat guys cleaned the water. Very interesting. But if we look at this fat that they have, and we extract it, and we purify it, and we dry it, and we make it into beets, we find that it actually is a bioplastic. Super interesting. And if you are <laughs> a huge candy factory, what better to produce from this bioplastic the wrappers of your candy. And I think this one example really gives a very short insight in how one waste stream can be converted by nature and some engineering ingenuity into two useful products, clean water and a plastic. And we actually find ourselves now at the precipice of really understanding and really being able to convert waste streams into a new source for our resources. And with that thought, I will leave you. Thank you.